Welcome everyone, this is No Bullshit Gaming Podcast 2 and a half Gamers, session number 62. We are sharing actionable insights, dropping knowledge from our day-to-day user acquisition, game design and ad monetization jobs. Definitely not dis- discussing the latest industry news, but having so much fun. Let's not forget, this is 4am conference discussion vibe, let's not take it too seriously. So today, it's only two of us, it's Jakub, Remiar and myself, Matej Lancharic. Felix is out sick. So get well soon, buddy. Uh, so yeah, what's happening on your no. end? This feels a little bit weird. <laughs> yeah, I guess we, we did one with Felix before. We yeah, and it you, was but... me in Santa Barbara as well. Yeah. So now a uh, year year after, uh, I'm in Santa Barbara. Felix is out. We are here. So I guess we can. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's two of us from Slovakia speaking in English. We should switch switch to Slovakia. (laughs) That would be great. People would appreciate it, definitely. (laughs) I know, I know, I know. So what I'm going to do is I will draw Felix uh, into our YouTube uh, (laughs) visual design. (laughs) Uh, Because why not? With AI. AI. Image uh, to image, AI. Not AI. It's just it's going to be my drawing skills. (laughs) My drawing skills. (laughs) Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So I wanted to uh, to change the the layout a little bit, uh, but then I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> it's gonna be better. He'll be he will be with us all all the time. So since Felix is out, uh, we wanted to do a slightly different uh, session, but we are going to discuss Call of Dragons, uh, the game we briefly touched in the touched on in the flamboyant UA episode, and this game has zero ads, so it's actually a great time. To discuss this We're game, not having Felix here. Yeah, not having Felix here. <laughs> so thank you very much, Felix, for getting sick. Now we can uh, we can talk shit about uh, games without ads. Thank you. So uh, <laughs> so yeah, as, as I mentioned, Call of Dragons. I'm uh, gonna go go through the game design part first this time. Uh, Jakub is gonna talk about some forex games, comparison numbers and shit, and then um, I'm gonna talk about UA and creatives. And then uh, uh, there's going to be a very interesting and nice segue to to a big tribute to Viva La Dirt League guys because well, you guys are great. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, and they're pretty much becoming their own source of UA, I would say. Yeah, it's it looks like it's uh, it's almost like a new UA channel. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I will get there. So why do we even talk about the uh, Call of Dragons? Uh, well, it's actually easy because we talk about interesting games right after the global launch. And uh, this was in our backlog for a while. Uh, and it, it's interesting case because they launched the game, and by day, I mean Farlight Games, which is a publishing arm of Lilith Games. So they launched this game on March 28th and uh, already making 14 million a month. Um, not bad. Yeah, I see 16. Six, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> look, so I was, I was looking into this yesterday, so... Uh, <laughs> it's already old news, I guess. <laughs> so this is uh, what they uh, wrote in their um, uh, description. So Call of Dragons is MMO fantasy conquest game from the creator- creators of Rise of Kingdoms, offering an incredible strategy combat experience. <laughs> you can tra- translate this as a fucking forex game. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> Nothing else. Uh yeah, so, yeah it's, what... it's pretty much like an upgraded version of Rise of Kingdoms, I would say. It's like very, very, like you will see as I will show it. Yes. So, yeah, it's going to be, again, uh, a lot of visual stuff, uh, creatives and also gameplay and then comparison to Rise of Kingdoms. Yeah. So let's move on. Um, the thing is that this will be a little bit of a Forex special because I want to go like in depth with what mechanics mm. these games have and... What's the current nice. state of the market? Because this is in the end uh, one of the biggest revenue, like IP revenue only categories. Like ads are not really their thing. Sorry, Felix. Yeah, you, you missed. I guess this that's trend. why Felix got got sick because you uh, you were talking about <laughs> uh, no ads for for waifu games. <laughs> he was really pissed. And now yeah. forex games, no ads. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Forex games, uh, before, usually people in the West associate them with stuff such as Game of War, Rise of, uh, Game of War and Mobile Strike from Machine Zone days, but this is pretty much long gone, and now, as we see... Uh, I, I'm, I need to show the for, for, um, uh, 
the the creatives from machines on the mobile strike with Aaron Schwarzenegger. So I hope they can find it and then you will see it right here. Yeah, they they had that like <laughs> Super Bowl ad with Arnold, oh, which yeah. was like uh, what, like two hundred million views on YouTube you know, only or something. It was like that. just amazing how yeah. that that game was almost everywhere. So that's that's the the joke we were always. Uh, uh, discussing you all you open up a fridge and there is arnold schwarzenegger because of the mobile strike ads but as soon as they closed or like the, turned off the the, the ua <laughs> the game, the game, the game died. revenue was also turned off <laughs> the game died immediately <laughs> game yeah. died immediately which is not the case these days i would say like these days like the forex games are made a little bit differently but yeah let's look at the the market um so i pulled up the revenue for just those 30 last 30 days currently so call of dragons can be included on like equal mm. footing compared to the others so if we look just from the last 30 days revenue the top game is three kingdoms tactics i guess uh, chinese game that we don't really kind of have uh, the representation in the west then in the second place our favorite puzzles and survival the game that we all know from the fake ads that's been, <laughs> that's been running around. Then we have uh, Ebony, which is, if I see this correctly, the only game from American company and all all the top 10 other Forex games are from a Chinese company. Yeah. Uh, except Funplus, which is headquartered in S Switzerland, but it's a Chinese company <laughs> anyway. Uh, then we have on fourth spot Top War Battle Game, uh, our usual kind of contender, one of the inventor of the onboarding alternate Ooh. gameplay. Oh, as yeah, we yeah, yeah, before. yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifth place, uh, Rise of Kingdoms. Sixth place, uh, State of Survival. Uh, seventh place, Age of Z Origins. 8th place, Lords Mobile, Ninth place, Last Fort Fortress Underground, and then 10th place, Call of Dragons, which is 16 million. Uh, the top game was 35 million per month, and then, let's mm. say, Rise of Kingdoms won 29 million a month. Lords Mobile was something like 16 million a month. Keep in mind that these kind of fluctuate yeah, was... a lot between months because you have events and stuff, so it's not that big. Yeah, but, but still, at least those games is... were global yeah. launched quite a while ago. Yeah, right. But there's so, also 11th place wild card, yes. which is, you can guess, Whiteout Survival. <laughs> exactly. <Yay. laughs> of course. So, yeah, Forex category is pretty much very, very big red ocean where you get stomped by all these like very, very heavy, super big teams that are pretty much yeah, running like, like 50 I didn't even of their know. Games. I, I didn't even know or see like the free kingdoms tactics at all. I mean, I don't me see their, their ads. Me either. Uh, I, I see it's, puzzles it's mostly, and survival. It's mostly in China, or let's say the revenue is coming probably from there. I guess so. Okay, it but was, you are looking into our uh, favorite yeah, data too, know, and you don't see the ch China revenue. Yeah, 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 so. yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see. And it's okay. still like really, really big. Uh, you know to what be honest, is impressive? The yep. Lord's Mobile, which is like fucking old old game, and it's still like yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, up in that's the true. Air. And they are the I think they invented these like mass battles, what I call types of creatives, because they uh, were the one with the like uh, garrison against like exactly. an attacker. Oh, yeah, yeah, that one. So good, so so good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The other. The other kind of a name for this category that's been used around the industry is not only Forex, but also March Battle, because you have these kind of marching armies on the map that are Ooh, kind of marching with each okay. other. So you can also find this category under that name. Uh, mm -hmm. The other list that I wanted to brought up is uh, not the last 30 days revenue, but the overall revenue, lifetime revenue, I mean. Because that's a little bit more important because Rise of Kingdoms is not really in its glory days anymore or let's say at its mm. peak. It's in decline. That's why we are covering this game because Lilith actually has an answer to that and they, I guess, are not that aggressive with you anymore there. But looking at overall revenues according to our data tools, if we run that top 10 list again, it looks mm. a little bit different because Rise of Kingdoms is at the top with 2.2 billion uh, in overall lifetime revenue. And then we have Game of War and Lords Mobile both in 2.18 nice. and 16 billion. None of the other games listed are reaching beyond 2 billion and all the others are reaching 
after 1 billion plus. So there you have st- such as uh, games such as Three Kingdoms Tactics, State of Survival, Clash of Kings, Kings of Avalon, Mafia City, Mobile Strike, and Guns of Glory. Hmm. So again, uh, only like what's there? Machines out through Epic War and uh, Machines out through Game of War. So no, no other American yeah. company again, or let's say Western company. All, all, all are from China. So very heavy kind of a China dominated category, I guess we could say even in the west like because these games are definitely not making revenue in china like some of those like for instance the what is there not making or making no no no, i mean not the most of the revenue is coming from china from 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 games okay because run by chinese companies okay yeah because i think from at least from what i saw for call of dragons the u.s is the top uh top one by far by far there's like for example, Call of, Call of Dragons. I think Guys of Kingdoms is the same. It's like ninety percent or ninety five percent is coming from US. Yeah. Which is ridic- I mean ridiculous. When we compare it to Whiteout Survival, that was like South Korea first, then very close uh US and then there's other countries, but very yeah. different. Um, interesting. Finishing the charts here, uh if we compare Rise of Kingdoms with uh Call of Dragons regarding the numbers. Uh, Rise of Kingdom was soft launch in April 2018, uh, and Call of Dragons was soft launch in August 2022. So it's pretty really? much like mm-hmm. I saw the I saw soft launch of Call of Dragons in December 2022, but I I was assuming uh, this was also because one of our favorite tools they don't see the open beta. So mm-hmm. I will talk about it. I will talk about it. Okay. Yeah. But what what it, what this basically means that, in my opinion, is that they had this great and outstanding game called the Rise of Kingdoms, which they pretty much pretty much destroyed the forex category by the time they launched it and and scaled it up. And now what they did, they pretty much took the engine, the everything they they got and like put it on steroids. Pretty much. The, yeah, I'll show you like how it looks like. The production value is through the roof because now they can it's actually amazing. concentrate on that very very hard 20 percent that makes the thing like polishing and making yeah. it better and improving on their old formula because they all, they already had like the best game in the category so they're trying to mm. top themselves currently uh so you'll see pretty much what you know but that's usually of... very hard job yeah it is it is but uh to me this also seems a little bit of a more play towards uh cross-platform because mm. the pc client like I, I don't know why, but I wasn't able to to make it work on two different emulators because oh, I got stuck in the God, sliding God. puzzle verification that didn't let me through. Finally. <laughs> so they fucked you up, yes. Yeah. Finally some games you, you can't play on, on your goddamn PC. <laughs> so I, I, I download the PC client directly. <laughs> Voila. <laughs> yeah, easy. Okay. Yeah, easy. and it's so optimized for PC. Like it's Two and two and a half K resolution. Two and a half gamers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it looks marvelous. It looks like some kind of a new, you know, game coming out from CD Projekt or whoever, Blizzard. Like very, very polished. Like, yeah, I'll show. Yeah. It. So that's that. Uh, regarding the numbers, uh, Rise of Kingdoms is currently making something in the vicinity of five hundred K a day, hmm. or I would say that's what they hit there. The thing is that if we compare it to the like initial numbers with Rise of Kingdoms, it's pretty much the same. Also, revenue per download on iOS is something like 520 or something like that, which is also the mm. same on Rise of Kingdoms. Like it, It's actually a little bit higher after like a month on Call of Dragons. It's like 535 and then there was like five something on iOS only. Yeah. So Are you aligning this by launch or it's just like... Month, month after launch. Okay. Month after okay. launch. Yeah, so I would say it looks definitely very promising. Rise of Kingdoms at some point scaled very, very heavily uh, if you look at the download chart. So I guess maybe this will be the same tactic. But the other thing is that maybe this time we won't even be able to see it because like, honestly, PC? like the PC client is so damn good. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and actually, 
they have this promotion in the game that uh, will give you this kind of special avatar with, with fire frame or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and that yeah, if yeah. you play on PC client, it's like if you play on PC client, you get like this avatar, like very, very nice skin. For it's it's in for every player. It doesn't yeah. matter like where you play. Like go switch to PC and you get it. And I have seen a lot of players having that avatar. So I guess a lot of people are playing it from PC, which we Already won't see so. anymore. So we, uh, we see charts. 14 million on mobile, but we don't see the the rest yeah. of the revenues. So they can be they can be making so much more. Yeah, they can they be making so make... much more, especially now that we're talking about uh, Viva La Dirt League making very big UA pushes mm-hmm. for them on core gamers and PC gamers. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. So, so this nice. all makes sense now. Oh yeah, hundred <clears throat> percent. That's one of the bigger differences. But <clears throat> sorry, let's actually look at the beauty here. Yes, please. So, looking at the game, as I said, uh, 2.5K resolution. I hope it won't destroy our stream here. And it will even yeah, it might, get yeah. to be uploaded. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> Upload is fine. So, I have way better internet connection here than I, I had last year. But I'm sitting next to the road. So, uh, yeah, if, you, yeah, if you hear cars, ambulances, and all of the other shit, then that's me. Yeah, so we have this gorgeous city. Uh, Man, it's that, it's that, fucking uh, slow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it, 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 I hope. I know it's fine. Up, it don't don't up, move. Okay. Don't don't move. Don't move the camera too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we yeah, have now, the, it's, now it's fine. We have the usual base building. Like as I said, there's nothing really to it uh, compared to Rise of Kingdoms. It's very very similar. What happens here is that you. Like imagine something like Clash of Clans, uh, like very very similar gameplay to this point until you leave the base. After you leave the base, it's it's that march battle, like big big battles on the map. One really interesting tidbit here is that lately when we were reviewing forex games or let's say looking at them and their special onboarding funnels, mm. yep. a lot of those, especially new ones, in- implemented those fake ads with the you know fake gameplay or whatever they put there, like the Storm Shot uh, from Funplus, the newest one, have it. Uh, Kingdom Rush, uh, the top four one has it. All of like pretty much all of the new ones have it as some kind of a something of a very very mandatory thing. This doesn't have that at all. It's yeah, like they don't, forex, they don't give a fuck. You're yeah, done with forex. Fuck. It will be forex, and you're playing forex. <laughs> yeah, nothing else. <laughs> So it it is no, actually no great. shenanigans. Yeah, no shenanigans. because there's no shenanigans or, or the sniper one. I think like the sniper one, even Lilith had it. Lilith have it in the Lilith, yeah yeah they have it yeah yeah they sure. have it themselves with the sniper sniper gameplay. Exactly. But this one this one doesn't have it, and and I think it's great because finally, especially on PC client, like there's yeah the onboarding smooth anyway. It, it's great, and the graphics are just gorgeous. So. Yeah, we'll see. And I'm looking at the Stormshot revenues, and uh, it was flat like five million since they launched. Now it's seven point two already, so they are definitely onto something. Yeah, but these guys right. are what like first. I mean, they're already million? yeah already like in in first month. Uh... My guess is, and and this is my guess again, that mm-hmm. a lot of people that play Rise of Kingdoms will switch to this game. I mean, oh, yeah, the clans and the players because it's just a like overall life upgrade for them. I mm. guess the whales and like the very very big clans they like to start from fresh even though they kind of sacrifice their before you know whatever so they have there this would happen if uh, clash of clans actually made new game instead of the the yes. town 2 right or the base 2 or whatever was that yeah, yeah, yeah. so so these guys actually went for oh, it Supercell. and actually made, <laughs> made the second game here <laughs> but but I, my guess is that it's it's not only because of the like gameplay functionality and and the design it's also because this like very very good pc client very very good cross-platform functionality and like all these other things that enables them to scale completely different yeah this looks super good really really good yeah because if we if we compare it with the rise of kingdoms client which i'm just showing over the screen currently it looks like a mobile game yeah okay true you, you 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 can see it like the design the layout and everything it's pretty much the same like if we if if i put it down for a little bit but you can see the difference in, in the visuals. Oh, yeah, 100%. And, and like, 100%. It's, it's like not comparable currently because that's like what five years difference, but still. like Yeah, can you just uh, put it on the, the whole screen? Yep. Just try. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, 
these look like uh like noob game versus the the pro uh <laughs> yeah exactly is... and even, even even like if i zoom in out of the map here uh yeah. it looks something like this like it's again a little bit washed out i think i have the highest textures there that i could have but mm. it still like looks like you know something that's kind of old and if you look at the map that uh call of dragons has it's like Ooh. nice visuals units are moving there's leaves on the trees being pulled so, by the wind see everything everything and is like, moving nice yeah yeah and, and you have grass there you have you have pretty much everything and there's so much graphical settings they're like actually like I actually want to play this game as a PC game. Ooh. Like, why? Why would I not want to? Like, it's it's so good, so, it's so optimized for PC experience, and the monetization fits so well into it. Also, yeah, I'll get to yeah, it later. Yeah, 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 but yeah, it's yeah. so smooth. It's much more smoother than a mobile. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can imagine. But yeah, look, but... so I think uh, <clears throat> what they do here is uh, actually getting loads of the mobile players, and then. Uh, Reporting them to to PC client easily, definitely. Because on PC the UA is, I mean, it's still possible, but it's not as um, advanced. I would say, let's call it advanced as mobile. But still, uh, if you combine UA on on PC and browser, maybe, uh, and then with the UA stuff, it's it's like so so much synergy. Yeah, we'll see. But my guess is, like again, this is. I wouldn't wouldn't be surprised if let's say thirty percent of their player base could be playing it from PC or even more. Even more. I think yeah. even more. Even more. We'll see. Because why would you well if you are a Forex player, like why would you play the game on, on your small mobile phone when you can Because just... you're on the road. That's the only thing. Sure, but then like okay, uh you can in the meantime, like do these like tasks and, and shit on mobile, but then you sit down uh, after after work like uh in front of your computer yeah, and, and then play go, the game go destroy like your enemy yeah, exactly. alliance base <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah and you, you do that on, on pc yeah exactly it is much more um, like everything is just much more smoother and like more enjoyable i would say um looking at the gameplay itself as we continue as we talk about the base like as you see here it's like super smooth just the transition here Ooh. just just move out into the map and the base like it's so so good so uh, the base building is like very very easy. Like place like Clash of Clans, you build uh, upgrades. That you have these super high long timers of like two days, twenty days, whatever days. <sighs> you have uh, currency. Time is a currency in these games. So you have these speed ups that are either specific or non-specific. Non-specific, of course, are much more valuable because you can speed up everything. <laughs> the specific ones is just like, you can speed up only building, you can speed up only training units, you can only speed up research, so on and so forth. So this is usually the main kind of a culprit when you're looking at the game and you see these things like time as a currency, that it means it's a forex pretty much because like mm. no other game uses this, if I understand correctly. I mean, no other genre. Um, yeah, but there's shit ton of stuff. Uh, what Lilith added regarding comparison to Rise of Kingdoms is, I think, a little bit more power progression to the heroes because heroes were the first thing they innovated in Rise of Kingdoms in the first place, which Forex didn't have before, or let's say didn't have that fleshed out, and mm. they fleshed it out even more. So if I go into my heroes, I not only have their, you know, talents and skill trees that you need to pretty much equip for every single hero which have completely different use cases in the field their skills so this is again completely the same as they have it in rise and kingdoms but you also have the artifacts and the artifacts are even active skills so they are much more fleshed out than just the normal inventory you have in rise and kingdoms and of course they're behind another gacha so aha <laughs> gacha pool again oh. So, so is, is there any any game out there that uh, we we will talk about that don't doesn't have the the gacha pools? I don't, uh, I, don't know I, if lately we we talk about something without gacha pools. No. It's just like so efficient this progression model and monetization model. So well, I guess uh, uh, Brawl Stars removed gacha pools. Yeah, Brawl Stars removed that, but we didn't talk about that game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yet, yet. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what, what happens with Supercell soft launch game, the Squad Busters. If we can talk about them, that's uh, kind of closer to Brawl Stars. But yeah, let's see. Let's see. Uh, continuing here, um, as I said, you build units, you build resources, you kind of get the resources, and yada yada, the usual kind of base building stuff. And then we switch to the map. 
a map is what makes Forex games interesting because players are the content and players are driving the game itself. The game is basically just a platform from them to kind of have their playground. Mm. So usually what happens, you have these, like like I told last time, like houses with shields that you usually use with Forex games. It means like those are kind of early players that are still protected by the game. Yeah. To not as be soon raided. as my shield is over, then I'm fucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you better join an alliance, let's say. So you see here that I joined this like alliance that was near my place because I had no other choice if I didn't <laughs> want to move. And then I have all my other kind of alliance members around me. We have alliance base and so on and so forth. And then there's other alliances that are competing against us for resources. Uh, we already survived uh, this kind of attack today from French alliance and had to coordinate and defend our fortress in the chat, which was mm. kind of nearly demolished. So we needed to call help from the other alliance here from the right side of the map here. And this is all it is around Forex. Forex's games are about this kind of social dy dynamic around the map when one alliance wants to destroy another, there's a fight against resources, so on and so forth, yada, yada, yada. The other thing is that there's active exploration that if mm. I zoom out very, very high, like you see here, you see that you're slowly cutting out pieces out of the map and exploring mm -hmm. them. You have this kind of special mechanic that you have these scouts that has to explore areas. You send them there and then slowly you chip away from the fog of war and explore the whole map have to say that the map like what you see here is actually very very big like if i go here yeah the thing you just saw is just like a segment of something and it kind of gets bigger and bigger the thing is that reminds uh, me the, the the beta version of diablo map <laughs> we, we explored yeah, like a very a big. <laughs> very but, but, small fraction of it but actually, the map is not that big uh, because of some kind of afterthought. It's it's that big because what happens is that it concentrates players and pitches them together. It's kind of a similar concept to Hunger Games. So what happens Ooh. here, you have this first layer of the map at the edges, and then you see this kind of a garrison that sells mm. level 2 pass. And what happens currently, because this is a fresh server and fresh map, no one is here in this kind of inner circle of the map. And mm. alliances need to fight their way through, pretty much occupy this pass, and then move to the other side where there's more richer resources, better ah. rewards, enemies, and everything. And so you during progress this, yeah, and during this process, and... you pretty much need to, like, like you see here, like our whole clan or alliance need to pretty much move their asses down there, occupy the pass, prevent other alliances of kicking our asses and then move yeah. inward. And during this process, of course, alliances will eventually die and kill each other. So yeah. people are pretty much, uh, yeah, nudged to go here into these kind of slaughter passes where they will pretty much fight over who can take control over it and then move inward. So this again, the whole whole thing is built around that you need to have this kind of a social interaction, friendly or not friendly. Mm. If you don't like it or like it, otherwise you're just food. Like, there's no way you can play this game <laughs> by not having an alliance. It's just like, yeah, sorry. It's it's all about that. The other interesting thing is that, of course, there's, you can see these kind of resource nodes. So there's kind of gathering stuff. You need to have resources. Then there's the, like, random enemy stuff. I think it's, like, just not really that important. It's rather teaches you. But the, what's important regarding the enemy are these kind of mini bosses that the whole alliance need to kind of destroy. And it takes so much time to kill these things. <laughs> so, so that's there. But again, it's like, think of it some kind of world boss in World of Warcraft or something. You need to rally your alliance and then all the like people from there gather their army there and then de destroy the boss, get some rewards on. So for we already have this like, this is going to be our first goal set up by our clan leader. <laughs> so we're already trying to all take right. down this bear. So nice. the alliance plane is the main bread and butter of this game. Um, Regarding the resources, uh, you have still more and more as you move forward. You have gold, uh, wood, and rock, and mana, whatever. But pretty much, they have numerous soft currencies, numerous materials, numerous stuff there, like so much resources. I don't think uh -huh. any other game has like... Yeah, how does the tie to the monetization? The thing is that it's bottomless. <laughs> that's, the, <laughs> that's the main point from it. Like these games have the 
most uh, like most debt regarding spend debt within their economies just because of that and that ties to this mechanic of units hospitals and destruction of property which is very signature which we can talk around mm. now so what happens is that if i let's say let's take some enemy so if i have this enemy on the map imagine it would be another player or whatever and i want to attack it so i first need to create some kind of a squad of units so let's say i mm -hmm. have level one and level two mages and a mage hero so let me send him into the fight and he will fight and there you have the marching part of the gameplay you see these lines around the map as like they are moving and destroying we can use the active element and send a nice fireball their way <laughs> what is it uh, there it is where is your fireball didn't, didn't ah there it is ah, okay defeated anyway uh, so what <laughs> happens, we can either continue fighting or even move the hero on the map or do something else with it, or we can return him back. So what happens now, we see that our hospital got active because some of our troops got injured. So they need to be healed back to full health because they pretty much just get status of severe injured, whatever, cannot be used with, for fighting, and mm. they, get, get, they get to the hospital. And then they're pretty much rejuvenated and the process completes. Uh, the thing is that before, in Rise of Kingdoms, if in, in the old games of the old Forex genre, like th this, oh. this is like one of the big changes. I know it's kind of small, but it's a big change. So what happens here is that hospitals in Forex games before and in Rise of Kingdoms, they have capacity. And what happens that if you had more units than your capacity and your units were defeated in battle and pretty much severely wounded and there was no space in your hospital they died that's mm. it goodbye to months of grinding your troops are dead <laughs> yeah, that's... so so this was Amazing. one of the very very kind of big pushes or pressures regarding monetization within these games that you would need to like really really fast rejuvenate your troops because you lost them completely and this is pretty much the mm. destruction of property because if we go uh, back to rise of kingdoms if i look at the units here they cost resources and they let's say just 350 swordsmen takes like nearly three hours just to build and then later on i need to upgrade them to swordsman three swordsman four swordsman five research blah 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 so it's like very very big investment the thing is that hospitals in uh, call of dragons look uh, works a little bit different because what's happening here is that uh, where it was written yeah Hospitals are actually with, without un, with unlimited capacity. But what happens here is that they have these different ratios of units dying if they're in like different encounters, meaning that a percentage of defeated units will automatically die. So there is still mm. some destruction of the property, but I would say it's not that severe. And the other thing that's kind of genius they did is this resource healing, which means that a hospital will heal for free some, some units that's like arbitrary number here but you can use resources to speed it up instantly which Amazing. means you can buy the resources through money if you don't have them so i guess it's a little bit more streamlined compared to all the other forex games where if you didn't have that capacity or you just were pretty much floored as as the saying say like to zero you lost like months of progression into your game like not that many games use this mechanic i think like Another comparison would be like Golf Clash, where you have the betting mechanic, where you bet soft currency when you go into a battle, and if you lo lose it, you, you lose the you know the soft currency there. But here it's like even more cutthroat. But yeah, th this is one of the main reasons why these games can absorb so much money because you can kind of lose value if you buy mm. something, you speed up something, you you know bought the resources through money, and then you lose the troops. You, that man, money vanishes away. There's no progression to show for it in the game. So that's kind of very, very cutthroat. Um, the other thing is that, as we said, our favorite gacha. gacha so yeah, they have uh, a combination of shard gacha and kind of an unlock gacha. Ooh, oh, that looks nice. Some kind of a nice hero here, which is... Is it legendary or is it not legendary? Oh, it's epic. Anyway, mm. so we got an epic, epic hero. hero. Nice. Uh, but as you see here, we unlock the hero first. There's no shards. And then all the other heroes were shards. So they're using a similar system, like, let's say, 
a little bit of modification similar to the system the clash file uses where your heroes are leveled through shards so first kind of combination unlocks the hero the first shard that gives it to you and you can actively use him in battle and then later down the line if you want to upgrade his skills you need kind of duplicates of that hero which means the gacha again is absorbing duplicates which you are using to upgrade hero skills and then those skills are doing more damage and then star ratings and more travel progression so on so forth yeah. So, yeah, the gacha system works great there. Heroes are great also because you have different heroes for different functions in the game. You have heroes that would, like, defeat enemies. You have heroes that are good in PvP. You have heroes that are just specially for building stuff. You have heroes that is just for gathering stuff, like resources and stuff like that. So it's very, very properly set up gacha with, like, very good depth and width. So, yeah, hands, hands down for Lilith for making this, nice. this run. No, I, I think I they, think they so. know what they are doing. They, yeah, they, they, they don't know. Yeah, they know. Yeah. They have like years of experience from Rise of Kingdoms, but I think they were the first who can streamline it this much like through the gacha system. But yeah, it's like outstandingly good. Um, regarding the monetization itself, as we talk around it, let's look at some examples that I think are kind of just like very, very smooth. So let's say we have this... Um, yeah, build build the unit. We're building something, so let's speed up time, of course. Why not? So the game offers us, for instance, uh, instantly the inventory timers that we have in our inventory. But if we scroll downwards, it's already offering us the ones that we can buy. It's so seamless. Very, very nice. <laughs> uh, regarding the offers, one offer, for instance, is already kind of sitting Ooh. there on the screen all the time. It's like nice. just sitting there. Uh, I know that a lot of offers get kind of popped was up. Was it for 99 cents? Yeah, yeah, this is for 99 cents. This is their conversion mm -hmm. offer because it's kind of no brainer. Le yeah, legendary hero, 99 cents. It's like what 90% conversion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can this even play really the, no the, the intro video if you want. It. Like, looks so good, does it? <laughs> oh, yeah. I yeah, mean, on PC, wouldn't convince is me. Better. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't yeah. convince me to buy it, but it looks really good. Yeah, yeah. On, on PC, it's just like it's just much more smoother. Uh, yeah. Of then you have of these, these like other things. Like you can see like so much more offers, so much more stuff that you can buy. So many like vectors of like spending Ooh, money. Systems and vectors, very good. Yeah, love it. And and like they have like what like five different battle passes or whatever. And like, Ooh, five uh, different. Like why? These are. These uh, is are it, what's the difference? Uh, it's just different resources in them because one for ah, this, okay. one for that, one for that. Uh, yeah, this is, I think, just events. Like, these are all the events that are running here. That's like so much stuff they have there. And, like, definitely, like, this is a community driven game. It's like, yeah, yeah that, that, that just works different. Like you said last time, Mariana Trench Deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mariana Trench Deep. Like, this is the trench. This is excellent. This is the, the trench. trench. Okay. So just to give people some kind of understanding what they're talking about, like these games have spent depths of like 120, 150K. And that just means that they will give you a competitive level. It doesn't mean that mm. you pass the game and you have everything. It just means that you can now... Yeah, you, can, you can play. You can yeah, play. you can play on the highest competitive <laughs> level. Like it's, it's like so big. So okay. much stuff. Yeah. Let's, let's continue to UA because we will be here forever, uh, which is fine. I mean, uh, at least, uh, you know, this was... Uh, we know and we knew you you need to go last because you talk always <laughs> <laughs> you always talk it's good so i think uh from the from the u.s perspective as uh, we touched upon the soft launch and i was looking into the soft launch uh, numbers in in one of our favorite data tools it was uh said that it's it was soft launch in december 2022 but I will get get there. Uh, so at the end of the month, 28th of December, um, in a lot of countries actually, which was Brazil, Indonesia, Philippines, Turkey, Mexico, um, Colombia as well, Peru, Argentina, Spain, Portugal, UK, um, Canada, and Australia. So basically, LATAM, uh, Southeast Asia, and Tier 1, right off the bat. And the in, the in the first three days, it was 50K in stars and 32,000 revenues. <laughs> and like, when I was looking into this, uh, it made me think the game was already tested out in beta testing um, for a long time. So as you said, uh, they actually soft launched the game in, in August 2022. Uh, so I guess uh, they also know what the fuck they are doing thanks to Rise of Kingdoms. <laughs> uh, but they already made 400k in January 
and uh, the top one geo for uh, for revenue was Canada, and top two, can you guess? It was Philippines. Okay. <laughs> For 400k a month, there's like mice nuts for Forex game. Of course, but in soft launch, dude, yeah. in soft launch, come on. In soft launch for, for this game, it, it makes more money than like 50% of the game out there. <laughs> this was only soft launch. And uh, the same thing happened in February, just uh, one month before the global. But in, in February, man, it was the, the revenue wise best countries Philippines, Indonesia, and Brazil. Seriously? It was followed by Australia and Canada, so I guess uh, definitely not the the classic soft launch <laughs> we maybe, are talking about. Maybe these were the whales from Rise of Kingdoms. They wanted to could be, yeah, could early be. and just use VPN. <laughs> could be, yeah, could be. Uh, but then uh, you know they added uh, iOS in March and then immediately went global. So as we discussed at the beginning, at the top geos, uh, iOS versus uh, Google Play in terms of revenues, like top one US. Uh, and I'm I'm looking at last 30 days, which uh, we're talking about is like 16. Oh, it was actually 17, uh, 17 million in the last um, few months. So I guess 14 uh, in this uh, this month. Nevertheless, US like 5 million. And then second is France with 500K. <laughs> <laughs> That's the scale you get with these games. So, so much difference. So it's US, France, Germany, Canada, Singapore, UK, Thailand, Australia, Switzerland, and Russia on the top 10 spot. Interesting that this is iOS. Mm-hmm. But it's like such a big difference. And then Google Play, US again, 2 million. And then France on the second place, 400,000. Again, that's like so such a big difference. But then we have Germany, Indonesia, Canada, Philippines, uh, UK, Singapore, Brazil, and Australia. So, so why is um, like why is here US on top one uh, by far, and uh, the white out survival is Korea and then US right behind. So I guess we already dis- discussed uh, at the beginning. Uh, it's just a completely different type of uh, strategy game, right? Or like why why do you think is uh, such a big difference? The the thing is that white out survival is a little bit more. It uses that Frostpunk team. That's, oh, okay. that's one thing. And this is kind of a as Forex as it gets. Mm-hmm. And people in US are, yeah. keep in mind that people in US are very programmed to play Forex from the days of Machine Zone. Because they True. were programmed by the yeah. super big marketing machine with all the hard <laughs> that yeah, this is okay. like one of the best games to play. So nice. yeah, okay. there's a tradition of playing Forex games in, in the US. Okay, and um, if we are talking about competition, so I guess you already mentioned a lot of them, but then I was looking into um, Kingdom Guard, obviously, Top War. Uh, I don't think you may mentioned Kingdom Maker, but I guess like in terms of the like, comparison, because it was you know developed by Scopely and launched by Scopely, but in terms of revenues, it's just super small. <laughs> yeah, those are those are the guys that did the original Clash of Clans, the backyard monsters. Ah, okay. Nice. And then I was yeah. comparing it to, to wide out survival. So when we are talking about retention, uh, so we all uh, also got the, the um, retention benchmarks from our friends from Game Analytics and the benchmarking tool. So it looks like um, the top 2% of games, their retention in the strategy games, day one is 52%, day seven is 27%, and then day 28 is 15%. So when I when we are looking at uh, Call of Dragons, Survivor, um, White Up Survival, Top War, and Kingdom Maker on iOS, uh, Call of Dragons is fifty two percent day one, twenty percent day seven, and day thirty is six percent, and day sixty is four percent. Anything else? Top War actually Top War has even lower retention. So day one is forty six percent, day seven is fifteen. Day five, day thirty is five percent, and day sixty is three percent. But then, uh, when I looked at the day, the ninety retention, obviously, wide out survival is seven percent, and then the rest is just two or three percent. Mm. <laughs> Who would say that? Yeah, but, but it's uh, still like a long, long, long way from like the days where machines on it, would have like fourteen percent day one. And still, scale. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I wanted to say. And maybe I will, I will try to get these numbers and show it on the on the screen as well because yeah, like day one was like twenty percent or something. <laughs> that's that was terrible, but they were still making shit ton of money. Yeah, oh, because of the marketing push, of course. Yeah. yeah. 
And then we have uh, the Google Play retention. So Call of Dragon is 51% on day one, uh, 17% on day seven, and 4% on day 30. So day 60 we don't have yet, but still. Uh, it's when comparing to, to other games, the White Hat survival is still like 6%. Day, day 90 retention, everything else is just 2%. Uh, obviously, Call of Dragons doesn't have the day 90 yet. But uh, yeah, I think this, this game is uh, it definitely make a lot of money. <laughs> 14, 14 million or 16 million on, on the first month. It's uh, it's a very good start. So in terms of the UA channel mix, finally something different. <laughs> like three, last three games, uh, the same thing all over again. Uh, these guys are relying heavily on Google, especially on YouTube. So uh, I will talk about it in the creative section. So then we have very big, big, big gap. Uh, and then, then comes Unity, Aplavin, Facebook, and TikTok. So, uh, in terms of the creatives, uh, it's uh, right now when I when I was looking into this game and uh, after Staker, A Legend of Slime, and even uh, uh, Frozen City, it was just so much different. For Call of Dragons, it's UGC all the way, and uh, I know I was I saw a lot of UGC type of creatives for Rise of Kingdoms as well. And, uh, well, it's primarily cringy UGC. <laughs> I, I, I still get this one creative where there are people in the restaurant fighting over some bullshit and then suddenly you learn that they are playing Rise of Kings and attacking each other. Oh, I mean Call of Dragons. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, so let's see. I, I might just, uh, you know, share the entire screen and, and try to try to show you some of the creatives because... I think, uh, for example, this, where is it, the gym? Gym is just, this is terrible. And this is even localized, man. Localized? Okay. Yes. I'm not sure, like, what is this language? I think it's, uh, it's either Chinese or Korean. Uh, I don't understand really, but this is it. <laughs> CC. <laughs> it's, it's so much fun. But this is the only only thing they actually they actually do. Uh, maybe this was slightly different um, using the map uh, and uh, in some of the gameplay. But I was checking it and it's all like 30 second plus. It's, it's super super long creatives uh, on all the channels. Um, then we have two guys talking. I think that was survival console. Could be. Uh, and these are like two guys talking about the game uh, as usual, like one minute, one and a half minute long. We have, I mean, this was kind of, kind of funny. I'm not sure if you can hear cosplayers. <laughs> yeah, cosplayers. Yeah, yeah. It's like very like. <laughs> and this is just, I mean, it's terrible. <laughs> I don't. Think. Yeah, th this looks like worst version of Evil Ex Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought exactly. Uh, and we have, I mean, this. And I, I, I think you don't hear the sound, but uh, I will show, the, I'll show it with the sound. It's just so intense. He is speaking like it's the, the end of the, the world. Uh, but that was Rise of Kingdoms, was it? Oh, it's both. Okay, so he compared it in the video. No, it's all, all uh, Call of Dragons. Yeah, because there was a logo of Rise of Kingdoms splashed out from something. Yeah, well, I guess they used uh, just their, uh, <laughs> their assets for, for making these videos. And then uh, this is just, this is, I see this specific video like all the time on Facebook. And this guy is playing something and then <laughs> super random. Mm -hmm. And I know oh, this. Is, is this what you're talking about? No, no, no I, I have I... A, like the same, same concept, but uh, more fancy. Exactly. <laughs> they, this is I like mean, a fast food one. Yeah, but they, yeah, they this used... one I saw definitely. This one I saw with, with making uh, water uh, in, in the ground. In the, yeah, I saw that one. And also, like the Rise of Kingdoms, uh, they used all these like. Next day. It was definitely based from uh, based in UK, uh, these influencers or actors or whatever, uh, because of their accent. 
Mm. It was so no cringy. Way. So, so, so cringy. But I guess, I don't know, if maybe, if, uh, maybe it works. But they also have this uh, the map and also localized games to, to join in. Mm. But, like, nothing exciting, right? It's just... This is it. Uh, but <laughs> this was... <laughs> I guess this was fun. But again, this is what, like, Southeast Asia, maybe Indonesia, Philippines, or... Maybe that's why it works like so good in Philippines. Or yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess. Uh, but this is like the, the whole create, nothing else. Just uh, play a PvP. <laughs> hey, it, it is kind of funny. It is kind of funny. And then like, the classic um, UGC uh, concept. Yeah. Well, like this guy was talking about uh, how this is the of why I was talking about that world. Thunder stuff, nothing, nothing really like uh, Yeah, right? Exactly. And then, um, then we have some static images they, they use, like all of these, like some vehemence to crash enemies and whatever else. That's like, the creative... that's like launcher graphic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. And then what, what we have? Yeah, I guess that's it. I mean, it's like nothing too interesting. Uh, but then, um, again, few cgi videos a little bit here and there uh but again relying heavily on the on the ugc no hyper casuals uh ideas or um no hero wars type of uh, no tower <laughs> creatives fake. no survivor io inspiration nothing from the current trends especially no fake ads no fake ads this is interesting uh but yeah so we have some interesting tidbits here again, so terrible actors in the UGC. <laughs> so I saw already this Rise of, Rise of Kingdoms, uh, what I mentioned. I'm not sure what is happening here, but I guess these actors are just not as great in acting, I guess. <laughs> because they are low cost creative actors. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how, how this works. It's yeah, really these cringy, are going to get right? replaced by AI. I guarantee that. Oh, yeah, yeah, 100%. Like the first on the chopping block. <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> but maybe that's like a, a cringe, more cringy, the better performance. I don't know. Maybe that's the key to success in Forex category. I, I, I don't know. I don't know, maybe. But uh, we saw a lot of long-form videos. So many of their videos are longer than 30 seconds, which is great format for Google campaigns. But I see also this across Facebook, Uploving, and even TikTok. I mean, for TikTok, it doesn't work. I, I guess that's mu that much. But uh, definitely great for, for Google and also localized creatives. So I'm not a localization expert, so, uh, <laughs> so I can't, can't say like what, what are the languages there. But I, I think it seems like there is a lot of creatives localized for Southeast Asia, like we discussed, like Philippines, Indonesia, all of these like top, uh, top revenue countries, at least from the soft launch. I saw also um, German language, France, uh, French, uh, and then also, I guess, Korean and Chinese, not sure. But uh, what does this tell us? In these days of, uh, you know, consolidating the campaigns and running geo packets and tiers, um, I think they're running uh, geo-specific campaigns since their creatives are localized. So I guess, you know, French creatives in f French campaigns, Germany in German campaigns, and yada, 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 you got it. Uh, which is against uh, whatever uh, I kind of um, kind of use or other companies use as well. Uh, but then we have some some interesting things. So so they are using also creators with fan bases to to build ads. So this approach turns an average cringy UA creative into one engaging video and shit ton of comments from fans. So I think we uh, we mentioned it in the in the, the flamboyant UA uh, part and session. So let me show you this uh, this creative, uh, actually, which is here, here. And uh, we were already uh, looking into it uh, in the episode, but here. So basically, Viva La Dirt Lake. Uh, and um, as soon as they published this, the 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 fans were already like yeah commenting a shit ton of uh if you if you mute the volume right on that oh, just like you, you can hear the volume yeah, yeah, I, can't. I can yeah <laughs> okay sorry <laughs> anyway what i wanted to say is that 
these guys are pretty much specializing in these IOS skits, so they are the perfect fit for these games because they have core PC player audience, or I would say even not even PC only, but pretty much core gaming audience. They are able to do these skits like three times a week, and it's like you don't even know it's a creative or it's an ad. You don't even know until the very, very, very end. That's that's the magic behind it. That's the thing. And then they have also like few of these videos, actually. It's not only one video, but I, I found out uh, also this like ing ignoring the free healing option. <laughs> I mean, that's what you were talking about, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, it, it's the thing that they use the, the like the, the humor and, and the like the skits they do. It's, it's like these kind of gamer jokes, like only gamers yeah. would know these things. Like normal person can't even <laughs> understand what's happening here. But for gamer, it's very funny because this is how like gamer logic works in a way. Like, you know, like having health potion being eaten, like with the glass itself. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> yeah. So and and they went. So this, I mean, this is great. Yeah, this is this is very good. I would say it's kind of next level because it's pretty much like an internet TV that's built on these kids, and just some of those are turned directly into like a creatives. Yeah. So so overall rating or just the Maven Matei UA rating as we as we <laughs> brought it up last last week, I would say seven out of ten. Uh, they're running like a lot of a lot of different UA shit, uh, I guess. Uh, and the creatives could be slightly more um, innovative in terms of the the current trends, but I guess this is working quite well for them since they're making forty million a month mm. out of the bat. Uh, and then I ca I think uh, we can talk about the Viva La Dirt League uh, next time uh, since we are already like, uh, yeah. Over the problem is that the game <laughs> is so big that yeah, took too much to cover. <laughs> no, it's like, and, it's I, okay. and I cannot go first next time. Of course, yeah, yeah. Next time you you won't go you won't go first. That's that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> oh, but okay. So so we have the the Viva La Dirt League uh, YouTubers guys. Uh, we we can talk next uh, next time because it's a very interesting case, like how they started and uh, what they are doing and how is this actually turning into like a very big UI channel because they're running a lot of different games not only call of dragons but Rage shadow legends uh war gaming also stuff. some and war gaming yeah, stuff yeah, and like other these. so yeah we can we can go over that it's it's really i was looking into into that and uh it's really interesting story so yeah overall rating for uh call of dragons Jakub from your end mm, i would say mm, nearly 10 out of 10 probably Ooh. because like last time when i was talking like i i got the clear thing missing here like this is definitely an improvement it's like yeah whatever i wanted from it like pc client that's very polished everything's super polished mm. everything's like cross-platform connected they have the best game in the category and they are topping it with this game so like what more you could ask for and they're yeah they're true. not using fake ads <laughs> no, <laughs> no fake, no fake ads. ads no fake they're ads yeah straight. kudos to that yeah so i appreciate that yeah. also kudos to that uh it's uh, definitely very uh <laughs> very different from from other forex games <laughs> But also, yeah, I'm not sure like what uh, what uh, amount of money Kingdom Guard makes, uh, but it's definitely more than than Call of Dragons for now. For now, yeah, for now, for now, for sure. All right, thank you very much for listening. Uh, I guess uh, see you next time. Felix is gonna be healthy, maybe we'll see. Yeah, we will need to watch a <laughs> few more ads to get him healthy. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. All right, see you around. thank you very bye much. Bye. Uh, well, by the way. Keep subscribing. Uh, our YouTube uh, channel is growing really fast. Thank you very much for uh, for the support. And uh, until next time. Yeah. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.